Mr. Carreras, could you adapt yourself to loneliness? You're on this island, you don't know how long you're going to be there. Could you face it? Well, not really, I don't know. <laughs> now, you have eight records, eight records only. Did you find it very difficult to choose? Well, it is very difficult, but I tried, as an, an opera singer, to choose the voices that really impressed me. In, mm -hmm. And, of course, tenor voices, but it's quite difficult. <laughs> right. Well, what's the first voice you've chosen? Whose is it? Well, I think then, if you ask to a tenor, which is the, <laughs> the most impressive and most important voice of ever, talking about tenor voices, is, of course, Enrico Caruso. And what would you choose to hear him sing? Well, why not uh, from uh, I Pagliacci, Vesti la Giubba. Enrico Caruso singing Vesti la Giubba from Pagliacci. Now, you were born in Barcelona, is exactly, that right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now, in the, the, the mid-40s, Spain was in, in rather a poor state after the war, after mm -hmm. the Civil War. Yes, yes. And uh, I was born exactly on 1946, and that was, as you say, not the, the best conditions. Yes. <laughs> you come from a large family? I have another three brothers, mm -hmm. one sister and two brothers, and we are a very unique uh, family. Well, in Spain, you know, uh, tightly knit. Yes, yes, very much. And is it a family interested in music? Well, not particularly before I started to sing. How did you become interested? Well, that's a, a funny story. <laughs> I went to the cinema with my family when I was a child to see this beautiful film called The Great Caruso by Mario Lanza. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this is a reason for our next uh, tenor, which is Mario Lanza himself. Well, go on and tell me about the film. What would the effect it had on you? Well, uh, after seeing this, uh, this film, the day after I start to sing at home, uh, I was, I don't know, six or seven years old, and I start to sing operatic areas. The ones that you had heard Mario Lanza Yes. <laughs> and, of course, my family, <laughs> the first moment they was afraid. <laughs> and then uh, they decided, then I had a musical inclination, and they sent me to the conservatoire to study music and piano. You made your debut as a singer very early. Yes. Um, my first appearance was in Barcelona in uh, an opera called El Retablo de Maese Pedro, composed by Manuel de Falla. And I think I was 11 at the time. Yes. What was the part you played? Well, the part is El Trujaman. That the... Ex explains what happens with Neta, Neta uh, Theater. Yes. You know. it's, it's a fragment from Don Quixote de la Mancha. Now, you decided that you were going to be a singer. Obviously, this was very important to you. But you also studied chemistry. Yes, that's right. You didn't know which way to go. No, well, I always was thinking to be an opera singer, and I study music, as I said, and, and piano, and voice a little bit later. But because my brother, my oldest brother, he start a little, a very small chemical plant, mm -hmm. they decide, well, you never know with, uh, <laughs> with artistic career, <laughs> it's better if to have something sure, you yes. know. And for that reason, I start in Barcelona at the, at the university studying chemistry. That was a sort of safety line. <laughs> yes. What was your first appearance as a grown-up? Well, the very, very first thing was in Barcelona, in a very small role, in Norma, the character is Flavio. Who was singing Norma? 
was the for the occasion of the first Montserrat Caballé Norma. Uh, she and, and, uh, and her brother Carlos were, were, were very impressed with you, weren't they? They helped you a lot. Yes. They was fantastic with me from the beginning. And, uh, you know, when you are very young and an artist like Montserrat Caballé say to you, well, I think you have a, a talent, I think you have a beautiful voice, I think you can make a beautiful career. That gives you an, an incredible, a tremendous moral support. Mm -hmm. And that that's the case. I mean, yes, sure well, now, you've already told us who your next tenor is going to be. That's Mario Lanza, <laughs> whom you saw and heard playing Caruso. What's he to sing? Oh, a very light uh, Rossini song, the, the famous Tarantella, La Danza. Which he sang in The Great Caruso. Yes. Rossini's La Danza, sung by Mario Lanza. It's always been the Italian repertoire that's interested you. Yes, yes, yes. When did you first sing in Italy? Well, I first sing in Italy, due, I want a Verdi competition in Parma. Yes. And that gives me the, the opportunity to sing in Italy for the first time. Well, to, to sing Verdi in, in, in Parma must be rather alarming because it's Verdi's town and the inhabitants know all about it and exactly how it should be sung. Yes, of course, and the people there are, of course, uh, very proud. And, uh, I mean, it's quite difficult. <laughs> but <laughs> if they love you, they are really very enthusiastic, very, very, mm. very much. And winning that competition led to a, a, an important contract. Yeah, I had my first appearance in Italy, yes. in Parma, and then I, I went to, after this series of performances in Italy, to the United States mm -hmm. to sing for the first time in New York, but not at the Metropolitan, but at the New York City Opera. And that was a, a long contract? Yeah. You were with Julius Rudel for... That's it, exactly. For how long? Well, three seasons, exactly. And uh, you sang some very important roles there. Yeah, I, I had the opportunity in, in New York with uh, the New York City Opera Company to sing the many roles for the first time, mm -hmm. like Alfredo in Traviata, or Edgardo in Lucia, uh, also Cavaradossi, um, Pinkerton. Yeah, yes. Well, that was, was a very good help, good help, help for me. To be settled in one place and, and, and learn the repertoire. Yes. And, and to learn English. Yeah, well, my English is very bad. I'm very it's, poor. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's very good. Let's have your third record. What's that to be? Well, that's going to be my favorite tenor. That's uh, Giuseppe Di Stefano. I think he's somebody who changed a little bit the, the way to sing. I think he's a, an incredible sensitive singer and a fantastic voice. The color of that voice is only comparable to Caruso or Bioli. And, uh, of course, the, the the phrase, the interpretation, and, and I think Di Stefano is, for me, the greatest tenor of, of ever. And what does he sing on this record? Cagelli da Manina from La Boheme. <laughs>
that famous aria from La Bohème sung by Giuseppe De Stefano. When did you first sing in England? My first appearance was at the Royal Festival Hall in a concert version performance of um, Donizetti's Maria Stuarda mm-hmm. with uh, Mozart Cavalier and uh, Shirley Verret. And at Covent Garden? Mm, that was in 1974 and was uh, Alfredo in Traviata. Things were happening very quickly, weren't they? I mean, one, once you got started with your career, then it was all very exciting. Well, I must say, in, uh, professionally speaking, I'm, I'm a very lucky man. Yes. But I think also it's because it's lucky to be a tenor. Every opera has a, a important tenor role. That means yes. probably it's much easier for a singer to make a career if he's a tenor. Because there aren't all that number of good tenors about, or, or so they say in the musical world. Nowadays, we have very, very good tenors. But, you know, you need a tenor for every opera. Of course. And you sung, well, all the major opera houses now, the Metropolitan. You come to Covent Garden every year, I believe. Yes, I am very happy about that. And Vienna, La Scala, Salzburg. Now, you're a lyric tenor. You're not yet interested in the, in the heroic roles, the very dramatic roles. Well, not really, because I don't have yet the... the the voice to sing certain roles. Mm-hmm. Let's see how the voice develops and on the n- next few years. You've been working for Herbert von Karajan, and he persuaded you to undertake one or two stronger roles than you're accustomed to. Radames, for example, and Aida you tackled for the first time with him. Yes. He asked me to sing Radames, and he says to me he like a new approach to the role, showing the romantic Radames, not only the soldier, the, the hero. Mm-hmm. And he says, I want to make a mo- much more lyrical approach to the role, to the opera, and the proof that he took Mirel Lafreni for Aida, ah, which yes. is a fantastic singer, but not a dramatic uh, soprano. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a dramatic tenor, but a, but a lyric tenor, as you say. But I think we did, for two years, Aida in Salzburg, we made the recording as well, and I'm very happy about it, yeah. I must say. Very interesting production. Yes. <laughs> uh, record number four, another tenor? Yes, another tenor, and uh, the opinion of many people, that's voice, and that's Jussi Biorlin. I think that's an incredible voice, an incredible singer, and every opera lover <laughs> knows that Biorlin is probably with, as I say before, with Caruso and, and Di Stefano, the most beautiful voice. And what should he sing? In Gemisco from Verdi Requiem. Jussi Björling, the Verdi Requiem, conducted by Fritz Reiner. What was the first recording you ever made? Well, it was in the United States, and uh, was a Rossini opera called La Pietra del Paragone. That mm. was many years ago. <laughs> yes, that was when you were at the City Opera. Yes, that's it, yes. Recording, of course, now plays a very big part in your career. Yes. Now, you're one of the few singers who isn't ashamed to admit that they use recordings of great singers of the past in studying their roles? Uh, I think everybody does, but somebody cannot admit it. I don't know why. I think it's a great help for us. And you learn things you have to do, and you learn if you never have to do. I mean, listening to other uh, artists, to other uh, singers. And I really do. uh, When I have to learn a new role, I really try to have this opera from... 
as much interpret as is possible. To yeah. listen critically. To listen, yes, of course. Of course, then you have your own interpretation, your own feelings, and your own capacity. And you, But uh, I think it's fantastic to have the opportunity to listen to all the others. You've recorded some audios from Spanish zazuelas, the, 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 the Spanish operettas. Have you played in any of them on the stage? Never, unfortunately. I mean, I would like very much to do it, but I didn't have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. But I enjoy very much to sing that kind of music sometimes. It's a very distinctive kind of, of operetta, isn't it? We, we don't hear very much of that music in England. No, well, um, that's a big market, of course, in, in South America mm-hmm. and in Spain. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to put that on stage with uh, dignity. I mean, because, of course, to make not only opera, but also operetta, it's very expensive. And in uh, Spain, unfortunately, uh, music goes ahead because private uh, subvention, not because the government helps the, the art. And mm. that, that's a pity, but it's, it's like that. Or well, it may come. <laughs> Record number five we got to. Well, that's coming back to Mozart. Uh, that's, the, in my opinion, the, the greatest Mozart specialist on the last... 20 years or 30 years and is also one of the most beautiful voices with a purity and with a style, in my opinion it's uh, better than anybody else for this kind of music and that's uh, Fritz Wunderlich And which aria shall we hear? Well the famous picture aria from the Magic Flute <laughs> Fritz Wunderlich and the picture aria from The Magic Flute. Is your home still in Barcelona, Mr. Yes, yes. Can you spend much time there? Well, the other day I was counting how many nights I spent in, in Barcelona in 1980, and it's something around 17. <laughs> and oh. we are already at, <laughs> at the end of the year. <laughs> oh, that is sad. Where do you do most of your recording? In London, here in, in London, London, yes, yes. Is there any one role which you particularly love, so that sometimes you wake in the morning and say, "Oh, good, I'm singing whatever it is tonight." One role that you really relax in and enjoy. And enjoy. Um, many, many, I can say, maybe uh, Rodolfo in Bohem, mm. Werther, Don Carlos, Edgardo in Lucia, but I think uh, the. The one which is not relaxing because it's very difficult, but which I really love to do. It's Ricardo in Ballet Maschera. I think that's my favorite role. Yes, it's an exciting opera. Any roles that you still haven't had a chance to do in the theater that you're very keen to tackle? Well, Don Jose in Carmen. Mm-hmm. I will say that for the first time at Covent Garden, 1982-83. Oh, splendid. And also Trovatore. I'm going to sing that for the first time. Uh, at Covent Garden in 83. And of course, then it's Othello, that's uh, something oh, for yes. the tenor, you know. But I don't yet feel, not vocally, not artistically, and not as a man mature enough to, to take this role. Yeah, that's a great testing role, yes. That, that, that really is a challenge. Oh, yes, that's yeah. something, something else. What about recitals, the concert hall? How important is that to you? Well, I think that's very important, and I'm very glad I have the opportunity to do several recitals a year combined with my opera performance. I mm-hmm. try to do a 12, 15 recitals in a year because it's a complete different contact with the audience, and also that gives you the opportunity to reach 
places then you cannot uh, reach with uh, singing opera because they don't have an orchestra or an opera house mm -hmm. and also it's very good for the style for your voice I think it's health for the voice to do recitals because it's very different to sing with a, a full orchestra than to sing with a piano and that gives you the opportunity to to put yourself in a discipline you know the piano is not going to cover anything is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sixth record what's that that's for me the exponent that's, that's right in english the the, the, the exponent the exponent of the bel canto opera i mean bel canto music and that's aria from uh, Bellini's Il Pirata, sang by, in my opinion, the, the greatest bel canto singer, which is Montserrat Caballé. Montserrat Caballé singing the closing aria from Bellini's Il Pirata. Now, presenting opera is a highly technical operation. There are an awful number of things that can go wrong and that do go wrong. Mm -hmm. What's the worst experience you've had in an opera production? Uh, well, uh, not, uh, not involved in an opera production, but I remember being a spectator in a theater, I don't know to say where, but uh, in Italy, exactly. <laughs> yes. That was a performance of I Pagliacci, mm -hmm. and the baritone comes to the stage to sing the famous prologue. And unfortunately, he, he was in not a very good voice. He was not in a, a great night. And he did two or three cracks in the famous A flat, the, the, and also again on the G, <laughs> the end of the aria. And he got boo, but very loud, incredible. And then, after one minute of booze and all the things, <laughs> he managed to stop the audience <laughs> and he said very loud in Italian, are you booing me? <laughs> well, wait, wait for the tenor. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard anything yet. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely story. <laughs> Right, <laughs> let's get on to your seventh record. Yeah, that's a much, much more serious thing. I would like to say that I'm a big Mahler fan. Mm -hmm. And it's also very difficult to choose from all the Mahler production, a, a piece or a symphony or whatever. But I think the number six, the, the uh, Dante, the third movement, it's something very special, particularly when conducted by... Herbert von Karajan and the Berlin Philharmonic play. beginning of the third movement of 
Mahler's Sixth Symphony, Karian conducting the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. How well could you look after yourself on a desert island? Are you a practical man? Could you build somewhere to live? No, no, no. I'm, no. I'm terrible. I mean, uh, I don't know if it's because I have to live always in hotels and, <laughs> and traveling around, and but I, I cannot do anything by myself. Oh, dear. <laughs> what are you going to eat? Can you do any fishing? No. Never tried? Never tried. Do you know anything about boats? Small Nothing boats? at all. <laughs> Sailing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you wouldn't try to escape? I will, I think. I don't know how, but to be alone, thats I'm really afraid about that, mm. really. Yes. And I will find a solution. I don't know how, but uh, really. Uh, You'll have to think something out. Yes. <laughs> uh, what's your last record? Well, the last record is, in my opinion, the record talking about opera. Mm. And that's Tosca, conducted by Victor de Sabata, Callas, Giuseppe Di Stefano, and Tito Gobbi. I think that's the most exciting recording of an opera never done. Which section are we going to hear? Well, I think it's the first duet between Cavaradossi uh, and Tosca, the first act duet. duet from the first act of Puccini's Tosca, Callas and Di Stefano with Victor de Sapata conducting. If you could only take one disc out of the eight you played us, which would you select? I think the Giuseppe Di Stefano's one. You haven't chosen one of your own? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> you wouldn't? No, because I did plenty of recordings, but I'm not still 100% happy about any of, of them. That's very modest of you. And you're allowed to take one luxury to the island. What would you like? <laughs> Probably that would be the picture from Velázquez called uh, Las Hilanderas. I don't know in English how that uh, it's... Uh, well, you, you described the picture to me once. It's uh, spinning women. Isn't yes, it? that's it, yes. yes. Well, where does it hang? In, in the Prado? In El Prado, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And one book, apart from the Bible and Shakespeare, which are already on the island. <laughs> well, probably a book, a poem is from uh, Rabindranath Tagore. The Indian writer? Yes, that's it. Good. And thank you, Jose Carreras, for letting us hear your Desert Island Discs. I thank you very, very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.